Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine. It's August 4th, and these are your headlines. First up, we've got surf fishing has been improving across the region ever since the new moon. We're hearing about offshore fishing really exploding out of the canyons. We're hearing about some big, big eyes and some nice yellowfin as well. And the bluefin fishing is still going off on all cylinders off the Cape, and it's getting better and better south of Rhode Island. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. So before we begin, I'm just going to talk quickly about the giveaway. Starting to see a little bit more, uh, you know, see more entries coming in now, but um, still not like that last one. That, that July one was fire. Uh, so you've still got a very good shot at winning. Got a couple really good picks. Um, and as you know, I'm giving away a rare guppy lure. And, um, you know, might as well take a shot at it. Just take a picture of whatever fish you catch. Doesn't matter where or how or, well, matters how. But uh, it doesn't matter where you catch it. Freshwater, saltwater, boat, kayak, surf, whatever. And uh, send it to me at deanderson at thefisherman.com. Or you can text them to me at the number on the screen. And, um, you know, I'm going to pick my going to pick my favorite, and that one's going to win this very rare guppy lure. All right, so let's start things off on the North Shore, as we always do. And I talked to James this week, and it sounds like the surf fishing up there is finally starting to improve again. They had a long spell there where things were kind of bleak. And uh, he said this week, you know, it hasn't been on fire, but it's been getting better. Guys that are chunking seem to be doing really well on slot-sized fish, and they're doing even better at night than they are during the daytime. And he said, you can do well plugging too. You just got to fish those peak tide moments, you know, when you got a lot of moving water and you got to go to those places that accentuate that moving water. So points, river mouths, uh, inlet mouths, jetties, anything like that, anything that's concentrating water. And um, he said, you're going to do all right. You might have to, you know, it might take you, it might take a little while to find them, but once you get on them, uh, the bike can be pretty good. Uh, heading down south from there into Boston, that bite just seems to be hanging on pretty good. There's still lots of 30 pound fish in that in that area. There are some bigger fish in that area and that extends all the way down pretty much through Plymouth and almost all the way to the canal. Um, also been some really big blue fish in that area which showed up you know over the last five or so days and so guys are getting a mixture of those. Some of those blue fish are in the teens and uh, they'll take a variety of lures. They're taking anything that's trolled but they'll also happily cut your eels or soft plastics in half so keep that in mind when you're out there looking for bass. Heading out onto the Cape we didn't get any reports this week from Goose um, but I know that the surf fishing on the Cape has slowed up a little bit. The guys I've been talking to are moving around a lot more to find fish um, and they're not having success every night like they were earlier in July so you know it's just you know things are moving around a little bit out there but there's still Good fishing to be had, you just got to be willing to put the time in. Um, most of the boat guys are tuna fishing. They're heading out to the Sword, Crab Ledge, Stellwagen, and they're finding a mixture of sizes, you know, from mediums up to giants. There's plenty of recreational size fish out there right now. And uh, by all accounts, the bite has been very good. Some of these guys are heading out to the canyons and uh, getting some yellowfin and big eyes as well. So uh, offshore fishing is alive and well out there. At the Monomoy Rips, the bass fishing has picked up this week. Um, seen a lot more evidence, um, mostly through social media, uh, of guys just doing really well, getting slot size fish and you know some overs up into the low 40 inch class, like maybe up to 42 inches. Uh, a lot of times these guys are going to get those fish throwing soft plastics. They're going to throw like 9 inch sluggos and things like that. Uh, but they also do well snapping wire out there at times and sometimes on the tops of those shoals they're getting fish on top water as well. So um, a lot of options out there, a lot of good fishing out there and uh, definitely seeing an increased presence of great whites right now. So um, if you hop on a charter out there, there's a fair chance you might even see one, which uh, I think that's pretty cool. I wouldn't want to be swimming with them, but uh, I think that would be a really cool thing to see. Hopefully one day I get to see it. Down in Nantucket Sound, uh, the inlet mounds are holding some bass. Uh, some of these sand waves are holding fluke, but really a lot of shorts uh, when these guys are fluke fishing out there. And as far as Benito go, you're definitely going to want to be more toward Nantucket than the vineyard. They keep kind of coming over and threatening to invade the vineyard, but then they seem like they're just not sticking around. They're heading back out there. Uh, so places like the Hooter, Benito Bar, and any of those south side of uh, Nantucket, 
uh, points and islands. They're they're holding fish right now, um, and it's only going to get better from here. I mean, within the next couple of weeks, we should see many more of them in the vineyard, and uh, pretty soon after that, the Albies will be joining them. So that's some stuff to get excited about as we head over into um, into Buzzards Bay. It's been kind of slow in there. Um, you know, the guys are getting some sea bass in some of the deeper holes. There's some decent fluke fishing to be had up on the Mashney Flats, but overall, um, the eastern end of Buzzards Bay has been fairly slow. Um, but inside the canal, things are starting to improve. I mean, it seems like it's improving incrementally every week, just getting a little bit better every week. Um, and to, uh, to continue on with what we've been doing these last few weeks, let's toss it over to East End Eddie. He's there almost every day. Let's hear what he's got to say about it. Hi Dave. I'm here on a wet, muggy morning on the canal. You know when you leave the house at 3 a.m. and it's already 75 degrees, it's going to be a hot one. So I've got the uh, power plant behind me, uh, kind of towards the east end on the mainland side. We've got a dropping west tide this morning. Uh, and that's my surf rod. You might be able to see part of behind me there. So if fish start breaking, I'll just have to get back to you. But it's been hit or miss on the canal. It's kind of like it's been uh, all season. And uh, there was some small striped bass, 18, 20 inch, chasing whiting in the east end a few days ago. They chased them into Cape Cod Bay and the stripers went there as well. So hopefully those fish will be back when they grow up. And uh, moving down the canal towards uh, uh, the herring run, there was a pack of bluefish there the other day on some uh, pods of small bait. I'm not sure what kind of bait fish it was. Uh, I don't think it was peanuts, but uh, anyways, they were they were there for a while. And uh, then moving down towards the uh, Bourne Bridge, right near the Bourne Bridge, some guys had some success with uh, chunking. They were chunking mackerel, three guys, and they all uh, caught fish that were in the high range of, uh, of slot fish, uh, 33, 34 inches. And um, there were some other guys uh, right, right near them in the same place that uh, uh, caught some uh, slot fish on uh, soft plastic jigs. I know one of them was pink. I'm not sure what the other colors were. Um, and then moving all the way down the canal to the railroad bridge neighborhood, right in the middle of the uh, combat zone, a guy coaxed a 30 pound striper out of the famous hole that's right under the uh, railroad bridge. And he was chunking also with mackerel. And just like 20 minutes after that, another 30 pounder was caught not far from there, right next to the uh, big uh, cement block, the first cement block. And he was also chunking with mackerel. This was uh, at mid-afternoon west tide, around two in the afternoon. So uh, you never really know. Uh, it used to be the best time to fish the canal was first light. And that just changed a few years ago. Uh, I don't know if it's global warming or what it is, but there's really no patent to, to fishing here anymore. Um, and so uh, uh, the, the fish are there, but you just have to find them. You have to work hard for them. So Harold Skelton, the Air Force veteran who does such a great job for veterans, uh, held his uh, fishing tournament this past weekend, fishing for a mission. I don't have the results from that yet because Harold's exhausted. He's been the host all weekend. And he's going to uh, send those to me later today, and I'll tell you what they were next week. But I believe a lot of money was raised to help veterans, which is a great thing. Uh, veterans in need. Uh, if, it were, if not for veterans, we couldn't live in the greatest country on the face of the earth and do all the things that we do freely. So I'm happy that uh, he raised some money for veterans. So my tip of the week this week is if you get stuck on the bottom, as everybody will eventually, uh, there's a lot of obstructions in the canal. There's lobster pots. There's discarded lobster pots where the line's been cut. There's uh, discarded uh, fishing line, rocks, holes. So if you're using a soft plastic jig or any kind of jig, you're gonna get stuck eventually. When that happens, what you wanna do is uh, reel in all your excess line, tighten your drag really tight, and then point your rod tip at the, uh, at the obstruction so there's no bend in your rod and there's no arc in your line. And just point it straight at it and then pull the rod back very slowly. And just when you think the rod excuse me, just when you think that the line is about to break, you want to pop your bail open very quickly. That'll shoot a charge of energy down the line and it will uh, free your lure quite often. It, it, it helps, it works about probably 50% of the time. So I usually do it two or three times uh, before I break the line if it doesn't work, but it's worth a shot because as we all know, lures are expensive. So try that the uh, next time you get stuck. So until next time, be safe and catch a big one. 
In the western end of Buzzards Bay, the sea bass fishing is looking pretty good. Uh, fluke fishing's just been okay. Uh, I was talking to Jason from Little Sister Charters and have to apologize to him. We got his email wrong last week, so what we've got here on the screen is the correct email. Uh, but he's continuing to prove his dominance over the local sea bass. Uh, whether he's fishing the holes off Westport or he's heading out to Cox's, it doesn't really seem to matter. Uh, he always seems to be putting some nice fish on the boat, and uh, that has continued this week. And then to wrap things up in Massachusetts, let's head inland and uh, talk to Roy Leva about the freshwater fishing. We are in desperate need of water. I have never seen our rivers this low. I mean, it's incredible. From creeks are pretty much dry. Connecticut River, you can walk across in some areas, um, which has made the fishing very difficult. But at the same time, it's piled up some fish in some of those deeper holes in some of the small rivers. Um, bass fishing continues to be really well. Uh, well, I continue to do really well uh, fishing pads and uh, very heavy structure. So weeds, punching weeds, uh, jigs, um, and, and obviously frogs or like horny toad type of bait. Um, smallmouth, I really haven't gotten into much smallmouth, um, but I haven't really been fishing early mornings or late evenings. I want to say early mornings are probably your best bet for smallmouth on the river. Um, and some of the lakes or even the reservoirs, they're probably dipping down a little bit deeper water trying to stay a little cool because it is very warm. It's been very warm and water temps are like incredibly up. And again, just water levels are so low. I mean, I've never, my whole entire life have seen it this low. Um, I will say it's pushed a lot of pike in the Connecticut River um, into some of the cool water holes. Uh, I mean, these fish are stacked. We're catching, you know, double digit numbers of pike. Um, nothing big lengthwise, you know, some of the fish are over 30 inches, but uh, real skinny and slender and, and, and slimmed out. For those, uh, you can fish bait, uh, shiners or, or, you know, suckers. Um, I like artificials. Uh, I'm a big bait guy. I think that, you know, you throw some big baits those pikes are going to eat them. So uh, that's this week's report. Hopefully something better next week. Uh, catch you guys then. Till then, stay cool and do a rain dance because we need rain. Over in Rhode Island, let's start things off with some kind of cool news. Um, I got an email today from Mark Kinsey. And uh, he sent me this video of him and his buddy out in kayaks. And um, his buddy had a striper on and he had another small keeper on the, uh, on the stringer hanging off oh the yak. My. And he was starting oh, to get harassed by uh, a uh, <laughs> by a hammerhead <laughs> shark. Uh, this was, you know, in coast in the coastal waters of Rhode Island. This was not in some exotic location. And I um, mean, you can see the shoreline in the background. And uh, check it out. Pretty wild. So that's pretty wild, right? I mean, I've never seen a hammerhead shark. I think that's kind of cool. It's kind of weird that we're talking about so many sharks in one week's report, too. But. Um, they were doing pretty well trolling the tube and worm from the kayak, and that's been the story for a lot of guys fishing from like Aquidneck Island over to Point Judith. Uh, again, just like last week, anyone any, trolling up against those deeper reefs, they're finding some decent fish. They're finding slot fish up into the 30 pound range. A couple times they're finding some bigger ones. And then another place that's been holding some good bass where you don't have to run all the way out to the island is the Watch Hill Reef System. Um, there's been some nice bass taken out of there as well. Out that way, it seems to be more of a night thing. Guys are getting them on soft plastics and live eels, and um, yeah, there's been some really nice fish taken from there. Uh, but, you know, there's a new sheriff in town in Rhode Island now, and that is the tuna, and it doesn't matter if it's yellowfin, big eye, or bluefin. Uh, they're all being taken, and everybody seems to be hyper-focused on that fishery. Uh, I saw this picture from Coral this week. She didn't have time to do a video, but she promised she's going to do one next week. And, I mean, look at this. This is a... This is a big, big eye, and uh, so she made a canyon run this week, and uh, I think the key for all these guys has been, you know, when you get a good weather day, you go. You know, you, you call in sick, you tell your boss you can't make it, you do something and you go. And uh, when you do, you know, the guys that can do that day after day, they're making, they're making things happen. The bluefin bite hasn't been as reliable. I talked to my buddy Christian, and uh, he made a run this week with a, with a friend of his. They kind of buddy boated out there. And they ended up at Tuna Ridge. One boat went east, one boat went south. The boat that went south went four for eight on yellowfin. The boat that went east saw a lot of bluefin but could not get anybody to bite. Um, so there's this tuna out there. The bite seems to be seems to be in a state of flux. 
some guys do really well, some guys don't do well at all. Um, but, you know, that's, that's kind of how that fishery tends to be, especially in the beginning, I guess. And um, I haven't seen a lot of fish pulling up real close to Block Island yet, but guys going to the dump, the gully, Tuna Ridge, of course, Cox's, they are finding fish out there, and, um, you know, it should continue to get better uh, from here. So hopefully next week, I know Max is out there today, uh, so hopefully we'll, uh, hopefully we'll have a good report from Max next week on, on the tuna bite out there. And um, other than that, in Rhode Island, um, oh yeah, one more thing, sorry about that. Uh, Block Island itself seems to be slowing down a little bit, um, which has kind of surprised me. I know guys that are fishing at night are still getting some decent fish, uh, striper-wise. And I know there's still some blues around, but it's the daytime bite for fluke, sea bass, bluefish, and bass uh, has been not as consistent as it has been over the last month or so. Uh, for a little clearer picture on that, let's toss it over to John Lee from JL Charters. This week has been, um, again, been a lot of Block Island trips. The, the bass and bluefish bite seems to be one day you'll get good stripers with very few blues and then it switches like today we had all bluefish um, yesterday was a bunch of big bass it seems like it's a little bit harder the bite around the island so maybe that's just august um and the uh we're also sea bass fishing that seems to be steady we're getting them on jigs we're getting them on bait. And um, this week is the first, uh, the, fir the past few days I'm starting to see um, half beaks. So I'm starting to see bait come out of the water showering. Today I saw a bunch of bluefish on top. It won't be long before we're starting to see albacore and, and big bluefish. So hopefully the top water bite will really start to take off in the next few weeks. Anyway, that's what I got. Be good. Take care. Over in Connecticut, we have some interesting things going on. We've got chub mackerel now moving into eastern Long Island Sound, and there's been some reports of bonito outside the sound, but they've been kind of mixing in with the uh, chubs, so, you know, it's reasonable to think that some of those bonito are going to make their way into eastern Long Island Sound, so that's something to keep an eye out for. Also, there's been a pretty surprising number of thresher sharks in the race over the last couple weeks and you know this they've been out there in targetable numbers uh, seen quite a few pictures of sharks taken um, from that area and other areas it just seems to be a big year for threshers I seem to remember a couple years ago when we had a hot drought year like this there were a lot of threshers around again so maybe that has something to do with it um, there's bass in the race and around fishes as well but the place that seems to be hottest for bass in, Lo uh, in Long Island Sound right now are the reefs and points outside the Connecticut River and the mouth of the Connecticut River itself. I'm hearing about fish from hatchets, I'm hearing about fish from Bartlett's, I'm hearing about fish from Cornfield, and many other smaller, less lesser known reefs in that area. Uh, to get a more complete picture of that fishery, let's toss it over to Captain Mike Roy from Real Cash Charters. Hey, what's up guys? For this week's fishing report, uh, for striped bass, the ticket is going to be finding deeper, cooler water. And if you could find that and you could get into areas that are holding striped bass, you could definitely catch some nice striped bass right now, particularly on live bait, which is typical for the summer. But we have seen a couple mornings we, we've seen bigger fish feeding on the surface, hitting large fish top water lures like that shimano splash walk so that was pretty cool to see um definitely seeing more schooly action now you're gonna see big schools of 20 inch class fish feeding with the mouth with their mouths open just sucking down this micro size rain bait very very small bait and uh, those fish can be uh pretty difficult to get them to bite um also uh, don't be confused with the schools of chub mackerel. They're feeding very ferociously on the surface. Another fish that can be uh, a little difficult to get the bite as well. Uh, and we also did catch a uh, Atlantic mackerel uh, while we were sea bass fishing. Um, <clears throat> on the bluefish side of things, uh, there are some big blues settling into the deep areas like the race and plum gut and diamond jigging is going to work for those bluefish. Uh, I talked to Captain Seth 
from Captain Seth Sport Fishing. And he said uh, this week they've gotten some big bass, over 40 pounds. Um, so there's some big striped bass kicking around. He also said that the black sea bass fishing is finally starting to improve, uh, which is a good news, especially with the new minimum size limit this year at 16 inches. Uh, that's made it a little bit more challenging to catch keeper sea bass, but that is uh, starting to improve. Uh, he also went out. Uh, for yellowfin tuna on the Aubrey Joy, and they had seven yellowfins up to 75 pounds. And uh, near shore, they hooked into a juvenile great white. So that's pretty interesting. And I've heard some reports of some stripers getting bitten in half and uh, some uh, local striped bass anglers hooking into some big, big brown sharks, which doesn't surprise me because August is when we're going to see shark encounters in the um, near shore areas. Good luck. Now the guys that are fishing for a fluke are finding some fish in the sound now and it's mostly been from like Niantic over to Southwest Reef. Uh, some Definitely some fish on the sand shoal. Um, definitely some fish on those deeper ledges just outside the Connecticut River. But the guys that are really serious about it, they're looking for the biggest fluke, they're still going to Montauk and that's where most of the biggest fish are being found. Uh, so if you've got if you've got a uh, hankering for some big doormat fluke, that's where I'd head. I'd head for Montauk and I'd head south from there. Um, this bends pretty good striper action west of the river. The fish are on the you know on the smaller side, you know up to slot size. Uh, it's been some decent sized bluefish mixed in with those, and um, it's been pretty good in the daytime. Guys trolling around the reefs, guys throwing plugs around the reefs uh, are finding some are finding some fish. Not a lot of big ones, but I mean we all know that the current world record was taken around Southwest Reef a few years back, um, right about on this date almost. It was right in the beginning of August, so definitely have a shot at getting some bigger fish out there if you want to go three-way some eels or something like that. Um, but the lion's share of the fish right now are right around that slot size with some bluefish up to 12 pounds or so. Uh, one fishery that just isn't quitting, no matter where you fish in Connecticut or Porgies, whether you're from shore, kayak, boat, inner tube, whatever, uh, it's just been off the chain. Guys are getting really nice fish. They're having no trouble finding limits. They're getting them on bait. They're getting them on jigs. They're getting them on fish bites. Uh, you know, all different things are working. And um, anyone that fishes for them seems to be coming home smiling. Uh, to wrap up the, the Connecticut saltwater part of this thing, we're going to toss it over to Max from Fisherman's World now and hear what's happening out in the Western Sound. The fishing has been on the slow side for the stripers. Our waters are really hot. The best bite we're hearing is definitely in the deeper water and then the sunset bite shallow around the islands. During the day, if you really want to target some striped bass, I would definitely work some deeper water or use stuff like tube and worm around the islands. That's a sure bet to try to find some bass. The strongest reports this past couple weeks have been from middle ground. There's been a lot of bait and a lot of bass. There's bass like mostly schoolie size, slot. We've seen some fish in the mid 40 inch range and uh, guys are getting them on flutter spoons, tube and worm, and trolling umbrellas. To our west, there's a lot of big bluefish off Greenwich, Rye, down to Mamaroneck. These fish have been big. I've seen pictures of them in like the teen and low 12, 10 pound class. They're like harassing bunker schools in the morning and in the evening. And then guys chunking at night are reporting a fantastic bite. The blues in our area, they're definitely in the deeper water and they're coming in at night to feed. So guys chunking shallow around the islands, they're picking up some bass and then they're getting schmocked up in bluefish. And we're coming up on the bluefish tournament, so hopefully these fish stick around. It's at the end of this month. You can sign up in the shop, you get a shirt, and we're gonna be stocked up on all the bait you need and all the bluefish uh, tackle you need to catch these fish. The fluke fishing has been on the slow side. Guys are really working. I mean, we've seen some nice fish in like the five to seven pound class. If guys are getting their limit, they're really pounding the area and they're fishing all day. But uh, gulp seems to be the ticket. Guys are doing well on gulp. And now with all these little snappers around in our harbors and outside the islands, you can try getting some of those and drifting those for bait. The snappers are about like three to four, some five inch around. We've seen some kids getting them and this should only get better moving in to August. Black sea bass, definitely in the deeper water. Get on top of a wreck. Get on like some deep water structure, deep reefs. Do some jigging. Bring clam chum and you'll find your limit. You got to fish at least 50 feet or more. I know guys catch them by catching fluking like 30, 40, but if you're looking for just sea bass, definitely get in the deep. 
Porgies, they're virtually on every piece of structure we got. Guys are getting them from the beaches, you know, the piers, all around the islands, you know, the deep water reefs, the shallow water reefs, you know, clams, sandworms, squid is always a favorite, and they'll take little small bucktails, little small jigs, tip with gulp. All right, thanks and good luck. And as we've been doing over the past few weeks, we're going to toss it over now to Rowan Little and Noah Johnson. We're going to talk about some of the lesser utilized fisheries in Connecticut and throughout New England. Uh, this is a time of year with the water temperature starting to near their peak that uh, Noah and I, who's back here behind me rigging up a different setup, uh, we, we like to start looking for the exotic species that will come in late summer and early fall. Um, stuff like banded rudderfish, lesser amberjacks, blue runners, jack cravals, every once in a while even leather jackets will show up. Uh, none of these fish are particularly big, but uh, they're interesting fare on light tackle and fly gear. Uh, use stuff like five weights, ultra light and medium light setups, and uh, just small bright colored streamers, jigs, that sort of stuff. Uh, it can be a lot of fun. They're actually, a lot of these species are pretty good eating as well. Um, I highly recommend trying some. They're the, like the pan fish of the ocean. They're, they're very tasty. But anyway, get out there, look for them on bell buoys and cans, and sometimes singles or doubles on lobster buoys, and uh, have some fun. Thanks, guys. I'm really, really starting to enjoy your reports. You guys are doing a nice job. I really appreciate that. And last up, let's head on down to Costa Rica and hear what's happening south of the equator and take it away. Hey guys and welcome to the Marina Pez Vela Costa Rica with this week's fishing report. We got a really nice sailfish bite going on right now, 25 to 30 miles from Marina Pez Vela. Really nice sailfish bite, some days double digit uh, sailfish raised, some really really good fishing. We've had yellowfin tuna out there, mahi mahi and closer to shore we've had a really nice rooster fish bite. Hope to see you guys down here soon. Back to you guys. We have no changes for the Dreamboat Contest. The standings remain the same. Dean Paella is in first, Rob Carrizano second, Garrett Weir third, and Eddie Terrible in fourth. The fish of the month is sea bass. Get out there and fish. Lots of time left. The Dreamboat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi-species fishing competition with a chance to win a new Steigercraft 23 Miami powered by Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. Now, let's check in with Dave for the latest on the Coastal Kayak Clash Contest. Hey everybody, it's Dave Anderson. I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of what's going on in the Coastal Kayak Clash this week. It's been a couple weeks since we had a fish hit the leaderboard, but this week we have two. We have a 16 and a half inch Porgy from Mark Carlson, which landed in third place for the category. And we have a 22 inch sea bass for Alfred Green, which also landed in third place for the category. There have been no major changes on the top three. Justin Oster is still leading the world with 11 points, and there's a whole handful of others with three. And that's what I have for you guys this week. Hopefully you're gonna find those reports useful. The fishing has been very good despite this hot weather. You just got to make some adjustments. And as I always say, if you're not a subscriber to The Fisherman Magazine, I highly recommend heading over to thefisherman.com, seeing what we have to offer. There's three editions that you'll get access to with your $30 subscription. You're going to get 12 issues sent to your mailbox, plus over 20 digital editions sent to your email. And you'll get to read the reports of all three editions. That's New Jersey and Delaware and then Long Island and, of course, my edition, uh, New England and we cover every species, fresh and salt, in that region. It's the best 30 bucks you can spend in fishing. At the very least though, give us a like and subscribe here on YouTube and hit that little bell thing down there so you get a new notification every time we post something new. I appreciate you guys for watching and we'll see you next week.